What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Mackey. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Mackey. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Mackey. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Jerry Mackey and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. And welcome to To Tell the Truth, brought to you each week at this time by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is John Cameron Swayze. My name is Kitty Carlisle. My name is Jim Backus. <laughs> Got to take just a moment to tell Polly how proud we all are at your winning the Emmy. Here, here. Thank you. Here, here. Real proud. <laughs> Now, these three people all claim to be Jerry Mackey. <clears throat> Only one, of course, is the real Jerry Mackey. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they are the ones who do not have to stick to the truth. All right, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this first affidavit while I read it? I, Jerry Mackey, am an instructor in the Japanese art of judo and operate my own school in New York City. While I do hold the rank of black belt in judo, I am by profession a concert pianist. I have been studying at the Juilliard School of Music for eight years. I have appeared as piano soloist with several major symphony orchestras and have also played at Carnegie Hall. Signed, Jerry Mackey. All right, panel, now, as you heard, these three persons all claim to be Jerry Mackey, concert pianist. Only the real Jerry Mackey is required, as usual, to answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will question until you hear this signal, and at the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to vote for the person who, in your opinion, is the real Jerry Mackey. And we'll start with Polly Bergen. Polly? Uh, thank you, bud. <laughs> uh, number one, it, it says here that you hold the rank of black belt in judo. Uh, uh, what is it for, besides... You know, holding your pants up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> the black belt is a symbol of uh, my success in the field as a uh, competitor. Uh, in judo, there are several different um, stages which one comes to. And the black belt stages are those that are more advanced. I see. There are different... Number two, are there different colored belts? Uh, yes, there are. I see. Number three, could you name couple of other colors? It's white, and brown, and yellow, and those who are very proficient, who are the ninth or tenth grade, may wear a red belt. There are very, very few of these. A red belt. You get to the twelfth grade, you wear no belt at all. Uh, John Cameron Swayze. <laughs> well, now, number three, you have your own judo school. Yes. Who studies judo? Well, I find that, uh, well, of course, I can only teach women. And uh, you say you can only teach women? Yes. Is a that uh, a regulation? Yes. A woman may only teach a woman and a man a man. I see. And I find there are women, you know, who, well, sometimes after they have a child or they just want to trim up their figures, I find they're mostly women in their 20s and even in their 30s. Now, number one, what came first, the judo or the piano? And I say they developed pretty much simultaneously. I became interested in both in my childhood, uh, being from California, which, as you know, has a number of... Um, different kinds of attitudes and sports and whatnot. Number two, tell me the difference between judo and jujitsu. Well, jujitsu uh, is really the father of judo. Which is the more deadly? Jujitsu. Kitty? Uh, number three, where is the green room at Carnegie Hall? The green room is, let me see, off the balcony in Carnegie Hall. Number one, where is the green room in Carnegie Hall? It's off the first balcony, I believe. Number two, where is the green room at Carnegie Hall? I don't know. Uh, number three, what is the difference? You say that jujitsu ju ju is more deadly. Uh, you mean it's more lethal? You can hurt people more? Yes. In fact, in judo, you are not supposed to hurt anyone. If you do hurt your opponent, you uh, lose the match. You lose uh, your black belt. Mm -hmm. no, number one, no. who is Anton Rubinstein? 
He is a very famous pianist. Number two, what was Giza King's specialty? Uh, Debussy and Ravel. Jim Backus. Uh, number one, how much do you charge for judo lessons? I charge $16 for a month, which includes an hour a week lesson. It's about four bucks a throw. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> Number three, you're a, a very little girl, and I weigh over, well, 195 pounds. How, how far could you throw me? Mm, I could probably throw you a good four or five feet. Uh-huh, well, cancel my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, uh, what are the seven, uh, or uh, what are the seven vital uh, areas that are very dangerous or that they, uh, you are taught in judo? <clears throat> well, to my knowledge, there are no in, specific... In good taste, of course. I'm sorry, before it gets out of good taste, we have to stop because our time is gone right now, and that means it's time to vote. So, panel, without consultation, will you please mark your ballots and select thereby number one... Number two, or number three. Remember, please, the team of challengers gets $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay, panel? Starting with Polly. Are you ready, Polly? For whom did you vote? I voted for number two, mainly because I thought you brought the two women into confusion. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a reason. John Cameron Tracy. I voted for number three, and it's a sheer hunch. <laughs> And the kitty? I thought it's the number two. Well, he knew about Giza King, and uh, he didn't know where the green room at Carnegie Hall was, so I evened it out. And I voted for number two. Well, the girls knew. Maybe <laughs> men can go to the green room. I don't think they knew the proper for spot. Oh, I see. All right. Jim? Well, I voted for number one because she resembles, much younger, of course, my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> and she taught the Marines how to fight dirty during the war. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the real Magoo, believe me. All right, the votes are all in now, and the minds are made up, and we're about to find out which one of these persons is the concert pianist. So will the real Jerry Mackey please stand up? Please have him throw Jim back as his mother-in-law. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> All right. Now, number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you actually do, please? Believe it or not, Mr. Backus, I am Mrs. Larice Glover, and I work for the uh, Central Branch, YWCA, of the city of New York, and I'm in charge of the club and membership program there. Thank you. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. For a minute, when she started to believe it or not, Jim Bacchus, I thought you were going to wind up saying, I am your mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so so Number three, who are you, please, and what do you do? I am Mrs. Suzanne DeVito, and I'm a secretary and lab technician to three doctors here in New York. Thank you very much. <laughs> no time for questions. I wish there were, Jim. I'm sorry, but checking the score, we find that there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Geritol. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed your visit. We did. Good night and good luck. Now, may we have our next team of challengers, please? What is your name, please? My name is Robert L. Scott, Jr. What is your name, please? My name is Robert L. Scott, Jr. What is your name, please? My name is Robert L. Scott, Jr. All right, panel, you've had your look. Let's now have a listen to the contents of this affidavit, copies of which you have before you. I, Robert L. Scott, Jr., Brigadier General, United States Air Force, retired, flew a plane solo for the first time when I was 14 years old. Since that time, I have spent 19,000 hours at the controls of single-seat fighter aircraft. During World War II, I flew with General Claire Chenault's Flying Tigers. In 388 combat missions, I destroyed 13 enemy aircraft. I am the author of a number of books. 
One of them sold more than two million copies and was made into a motion picture. Its title, God is My Co-Pilot. Signed, Robert L. Scott, Jr. Now, panel, as you heard, these three gentlemen all claim now to be Robert L. Scott, Jr., Brigadier General, United States Air Force. We start this cross-examination with John Cameron Swayze. John, please. With number two, will you explain, please, how you happened to fly a, fly a plane at the age of 14? Well... I had the desire to fly a plane, and I had a little bit of money. And I, uh, without the knowledge of my parents, I bought a Jenny, an auction sale, and decided to fly it. And you made a safe landing? I did. Number one, what inspired your bestseller that was made into the movie? Well, I felt that it would be a good idea to explain how a pilot felt at times when he was up there all alone and uh, I had an inspiration for the title and it sounded like one that uh, some of you fellas would dream up that would be a good story so I wrote it and it turned out uh, pretty good Kitty number one who is Danny Arnstein <clears throat> well he's uh, he claimed or at least there's a lot of reports that he had a lot to do with, or he did some work over there on the Lido Road. Thank you. Number one, number two, who's Dr. Margaret Chung? She is, is the um, sister of uh, General Miss Mo Chang Shek. Number three, have you ever run across Commodore Bonnet Hart in your military career? No, I haven't. Uh, number three, uh, name some of the other books that you've written. Down to Glory, Runway to the Sun, uh, Between the Elephant's Eyes, uh, Look of the Eagle. Racing with the Moon. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for that one. Jim, how about you? Well, it says here that you're, uh, you served in the, uh, obviously, the Asiatic Theater. Uh, flying, number one, Flying the Hump. What is the exact location, uh, geographic lo location of the hump? Well, that's the Himalaya Mountains over there in uh, Asia between uh, Burma, China, mm -hmm. India, China. Yeah, my, my brother shot down 12 planes. They were all ours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number two, how much did your book sell for? I mean, the, the one uh, that says on the affidavit, God is my co-pilot, was made in the motion picture. What was the, the sale? What did that sell on the stand? $2.75, sir. Uh, Polly? <laughs> Number three, who played the lead in the motion picture? Uh, Dennis Morgan. Uh, where was the picture produced? In California. Number one, what studio was the picture made at? Uh, Warner Brothers. Where is that studio located? Out there in Burbank. <laughs> Out there in Burbank? <laughs> uh, Number two, uh, is there a certain number of planes you have to shoot down in order to be an ace or become uh, get the title of being an ace? Well, it... Uh, Varied in World War II, if that's what you mean. Uh, it was five planes. I see. Uh, number one, who is right, Joe? That's it, Polly. I'm awful sorry, but our time is up, so it's time to vote. Which means without right. consultation, as before, would you please mark your ballot, panel, and select thereby number one, number two, or number three. I'll set or are you still musing, Polly? You mark? Yeah. For whom? Well, I voted for number one. Uh, more than a hunch, I picked him standing up there, though I must say that I almost switched to number three. But I, I, I'll stay with my hunch, which is number okay. one. Okay. John, your vote? Well, I didn't switch. I'm not going to change horses. <laughs> I'm still with number three. <laughs> and Kitty, what was your selection? I voted for number three because he didn't know who Commodore Barnett Hart was, and that's my father-in-law, and he's going to be 95 tomorrow, and I want to wish him a very happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky, but we join you, believe me. All right, Jim? Uh, I voted for number one, well, because he just behaved like the perfect ace that he is, and, uh, and he knew where Warner's was. He seemed very <laughs> interesting. And I would cast him in the park. You would? Yes. Okay, there you have it now. You've had the rhymes and the reasons that made our panel vote the way they did. How did you do? Let's find out, shall we? As we discover which one of these stalwart gentlemen is the real 
Brigadier General, United States Air Force. So will the real Robert L. Scott, Jr. please stand up. Me or something, so I'd switch. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all look just typecast. Yeah, don't they, they sure really did. did. They sure did. Well, now let's see. Number one, won't you tell us who you really are and what you really do? Uh, my name is Charles M. Brooks. I am director of industrial relations for the Texas company, Texaco. You know. <laughs> and number two, what about you, sir? My name is Edward F. Tate. I'm a sales engineer for the Johnson Service Company, manufacturers and contractors in automatic temperature and humidity control. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, there were, uh, again, two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Jarrett Before we say goodnight to you, General Scott, you've flown a mighty long way. Now, with, uh, with missiles coming into the picture, are the days of the pilot over, do you think? Absolutely not, Bud. They are just beginning, really. The young pilots coming into the Air Force today are the luckiest people in the world yeah, because they are going to be the space pilots of tomorrow. Just wish I were going to be one of them enlisting tomorrow so I could fly higher and further and faster. Wow. Oh. Never stops, does it, huh? <laughs> well, thanks so much, gentlemen. Good night and the best of good luck to you. Now, we'll meet a new set of challenges in just a moment. Now, may we have our third team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Fritz Brickell. What is your name, please? My name is Fritz Brickell. What is your name, please? My name is Fritz Brickell. Okay, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Fritz Brickell, am a professional baseball player. My interest in the game must be hereditary since my father played the outfield for the Phillies and the Pirates for six years. I have played ball with five different minor league clubs, compiling a record of 40 home runs, 36 triples, and an overall batting average of 273. This season, my first in the major leagues, I am a member of the New York Yankees. Signed, Fritz Brickell. <laughs> Okay, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Fritz Brickell of the New York Yankees, and we'll start this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, what do you all talk about in the dugout? In the dugout? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, strategy and uh, how to pitch different hitters and uh, how to hit the pitcher who is pitching for the other team. No gossip. Not during the ball game, you can know. <laughs> uh, number two, I don't know very much about baseball, what is this bull ring you're always talking about? Bull ring? Bull ring. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Bull pen. Yeah. No, bull pen. Bull pen. <laughs> bull pen. Oh, the bull pen is uh, where the <laughs> warm up. What? what is it? The bull pen is where the pitches warm up. Where the Toreadors warm up. <laughs> uh, number three, who sings the Star Spangled Banner on your opening day every year? Willie Pep. Willie Pep. Where's Willie Pep? Lucy Monroe. Number one. Uh, how did the expression in baseball, the barber, start? It's been applied to many baseball players. For example, uh, Sal Magnin, for example. Yeah, but how did the expression originate? I, I don't know exactly. Well, not from uh, Perry Como, but I mean, you know. Yeah. I don't have any idea. Number two, do you know how the expression the barber started? Well, I think that started uh, <laughs> with the pitcher giving the batter a dust off, I guess, and shaving them close to the plate. Polly? I don't know what he said. <laughs> I know about as much about baseball as Kitty does. Uh, number one, uh, uh, what position does Mike Klein play? Mike Klein? <laughs> I, don't, uh, 
I've never heard of him. <laughs> I must have had a wrong number two. Uh, Matador. <laughs> be quiet. Number Matador. two, just be quiet. <laughs> number two, what is Yogi? What is Yogi Berra's real name? Lawrence. Uh, no, that's right. <laughs> number one, how did you do in today's game? We won twelve to seven. That's very John Garrett Drake. Number three, uh, name the former Yankee player who's now on the business staff. Ralph Hawk. Number two, can you tell me? Jerry Coleman. Uh, number two, are you familiar with the background of the Yankees? What were they once called? Highlanders, I think. That's right. How many switch hitters in the majors? Well, there's uh, Mantle. Shane Deist. And the rest of the bullfighters. I'm afraid our time is all gone. It's time to vote, so will you please mark your ballots, and in so doing, you will vote as usual for number one, number two, or number three. All set, Polly? I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Are you all set? Yeah. Uh, okay, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. Um... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because I figured that uh, he's the ball player I'd most likely want to get the first base with. <laughs> what am I going to use a technical answer when I don't know anything about baseball? John, how about your selection? I voted for number two also. I liked his answer just a moment ago. Kitty, your selection? I voted for number two on account of the close shave, and I think uh, John knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and Jim Back, your vote. I voted for number one because I can't felt I couldn't strike out three times. <laughs> And I don't, yes, number one. All right, there it is. We have it. And let's see how well we all did. If your choice was as good as our panels, whether you win or lose, as we find out which one of these three gentlemen is really with the New York Yankees. So, will the real Fritz Brickell please stand up? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> All your reasons to the contrary. Thank you very much, Fritz. And a good season to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is James D. Houghton. I'm a new business representative for the Rockefeller Center branch of the Chemical Corn Exchange Bank. <laughs> Ever play baseball? In school. In school. Uh -huh. Number three, what about you, sir? My name is John Zylkowski. I'm a lieutenant junior grade in the United States Coast Guard. <laughs> How about you, Joe? Play ball? In high school. In high school. <laughs> well, there we have it. Yes, John? Uh, that Willie Pep. Yeah. Where did that come from? <laughs> out of left field? <laughs> that was right out of left field, if you must know. <laughs> and we see by the score that we had only one correct vote, meaning three incorrect ones, at $250 each for a total of $750. And Geritol, thanks very much, fellas. Good night. Good luck to you. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Mike Klein. Well, he's a <laughs> nine-year-old friend of mine who's sick at home with a cold, and I promised him I'd use his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I finally He's gone. very sick. <laughs> Except to say, I hope you're, you're all right. Real fast. <laughs> <You're all right. laughs> Except to say that High Gardner will be back from his trip abroad next week. And uh, thank you, Jim Baggis, very much for helping fill in for him while he's away. Well, thank you. I certainly enjoy that. Hope you come back. It's fun back having you here. And, of course, with High Back, Kitty will be off for London for the opening <laughs> of My Fair Lady. That's and I understand fair. you're going to be uh, sitting on the British panel of uh, To Tell to the tell Truth. To Tell the Truth in London. Have yes. fun, next Kitty. Week, thank much you. success in the opening to Moss, too. And sitting in for Kitty next week will be Miss Joan Bennett. Good night, panel. Good night, good night panel. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, now, this is Bud Guy. You're saying good night for Jared Toller, reminding you to tell the truth. <laughs> to tell the truth is Mark Goodson, Bill Cogman production. In association with the CBS Television Network. Thank you. Miss Perkins, Miss Carlisle, John Barclay.